Welcome back to Soccer Cards United. It's episode 245 of the greatest soccer card podcast in the world. My name is Jason. That's Enzo. Hello, Enzo. Hello, Jason. How are you? I am good. I am good. Uh, we are coming to the people one day later than usual. Unacceptable. <laughs> Completely unacceptable. But we do have um, a product to talk about, a product release, a 24-25 UEFA product release. First of the season. First of the season. Yes, indeed. Um, oh and that is the traditional first of the season, which is summer signings. Uh, but this time it's by Fabrizio Romano. Here we go. Here we go. That's right. Um, so they, we talked about this on Tuesday's show, and then um, a little a little, a little bird told us that it might be out on Friday. So we said, let's hang on a second. Let's slow down the, the horses yeah. and, and You didn't want the outdated podcast straight away. You, you, you're getting angry with, with, like, do we have to change the podcast days? Like, could a Saturday, and that would obviously ruin our personal lives, would a Saturday podcast make sense because you're always catching that Friday release? I don't know. I know people like to um, have a weekday release because it's a... Uh, they Dirt use it work. mostly for commuting and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. They we'll use, do you them. use a podcast or do you listen to a podcast? But it's, it's, it's that thing of like, do we change our Thursday to a Friday to catch the new Champions League format and then also catch the Friday releases? But then are we yeah, outdated for what happens Wednesday? You see, that's the thing. It just, it just never, it never ends. No winning. The only way to do it is to podcast five days a week, I think. Yeah. We should really have a 24-hour news channel. That's right. That'd be pretty um, that would be brilliant. Yeah. Imagine coming in. We're not in all time. We're coming in in suits. Yeah. And, you know. Coffee, be, suits, sit down. Yeah. You'll never guess what happened this week. We could do like the, we could do like the, um, you know, the sort of seven to nine spot there on the, in the oh, studio. And then there, yeah. People are around, you know, someone's middle of the night. I like playing it. clips from our primetime show. There we go. Anyway. So let's talk about summer signings. Uh, here it is. Boom. Uh, here we go. Uh, UCC Summer Signing by Freezer. Man, we already talked about that. It covers all the stuff. Here we go. The 78 card uh, set highlights the biggest signings of players for the, in their new kits for the 24-25 season, including quotes and rare on-card autographs from Fabrizio Romano himself. But that's not all. Introducing for the first time in Summer Signings first shirt relics. We've managed to include the first time they wore the shirt of their new club in these cards. If that's not enough, Lucky Boxes will also include Fabrizio Romano business cards with different levels of discounts for future Tops purchases. And finally, also in one lucky box, the new only one insert card, which we're going to talk about in a minute. So that's a, a lot there. That is a lot. There's a lot, there's a lot to say there. So um well, I don't even know where to start. So first What's... of all, there are first shirt relics. Yes. Um, which is a good idea, I think. Definitely. And then um, some of the ones that they've kind of teased have looked really good. Like they're a nice relic. They're not like a little circle or anything like that. Like they they look well. Yeah, there's a nice crest yeah. uh, relic for for Tottenham Hotspur for Dominic Solanke. Um, yeah, to there's the look at that. Morata. That's a lovely AC Milan patch. Look at that, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, then what else? There's also these business cards, and um, which get you various discounts on Tops.com. Um. How do you feel about that kind of feedback loop? Like the idea of getting credit for top stuff based on buying top stuff and all that. Do you feel good about that? I think it's good. I think like, obviously, if it's it's, a, it's an additional hit, so you take that, right? Um, yeah. I assume if you're buying a hobby box, you're someone that buys hobby boxes. So that, you know, £100 off code that you have there will actually come in handy for you. Yeah. I know some people sell, I see like on like um, card purchasers account or something like that, people talking about selling, if you're like Fanatic store credit or something. mm um, people will sell that like I, I have fifty dollars for any store credit, like I'll sell it for twenty five dollars or something like that. Um, so I wonder who'll be the first one to try and liquidate their tops credit for cash, yeah, like, try and sell like a hundred pound tops credit for eighty euro on eBay or something. Yeah, what's the exchange rate there? All that kind of stuff. I'd be very interested to know. Fascinating. Um, so that so tops have created their own. Their I've own seen that with like there. one for all vouchers and stuff before they expire. People try to sell them that way they just get the cash because they don't actually have anything they want to buy. But like one for all, like you know, what do you mean it's you want to buy? All. Yeah. And there's a sponsor for the podcast. That's right. Um, Looks good. I'd be interested to know, like, is the first shirt relic like when they were signing and they first put on the jersey, or is it from their first game? That's that's um, a good question. It's another another matter altogether. How do you feel about the base design? This one here with the with the triangle. Yeah, like I like I like the, the kind of electric triangle, but I'm saying like, what's that background? Like, what shape is that? Yeah, I know what you mean. It's kind of like. They're all kind of different outlines. It kind of looks like sort of a Star Wars helmet shape. 
Yeah, I don't know. I didn't really understand that. I don't know what's going on. I feel like on. I was missing. Look at that. Go back to that. Julian Alvarez. This Julian Alvarez, yeah. Fresh off that late, late winner, Jason. How do you feel about that card? I feel I feel good about that card. Um, he's a final. he's a top player. Yeah, I'm excited to watch him further develop that Atletico. The Madrid derby is this weekend. Very exciting. Um, yeah, I, I do just want to say on this and uh, this electric triangle around the players, it looks slightly like you might get like, you know, in a movie where like uh, it's sort of a say it's a space movie or something, a sci-fi. Uh, yep. Yeah, and it's like. Uh, there's like kind of space gladiators and like all the gladiators are lined up and they're kind of in like space chains. This kind of looks like what you'd keep like the Hulk in or something if the Hulk got captured. Yeah. Like you're looking behind him there. It looks like some pillars or something like some Indiana Jones kind of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. It's bizarre. <laughs> Something's going on. I would have thought like with Fabrizio Romano coming in, this would have been a bit more formal in a different way. Do you know or what maybe mean? even like a bit more kind of like a, a maybe Italian inspired backgrounds and kind of stuff like that or who knows? I don't know. Like cityscape or I don't know. It's bizarre, but it is different. I think Summer Silence has always actually had that kind of electric vibe to it. Hasn't that's it? Like, true. You think? That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I suppose because yeah. that's it. It's summer. It gets you excited. That's what that is. Summer Silence, a fresh, a fresh new... Ah, you just... There's an electricity. There's a buzz in the air. Yeah, because it, it's the announcement. That's the thing. It's that kind of announcement of this player has just signed. Like, this is... Yeah. Here we go. Here we no, go. Just, nothing speaks here um, we go like electric triangles. <laughs> Julian Alvarez, you can be lady with a quote. This is a this is like an on-card autograph at the back of this Julian Alvarez card. Yeah. And the quote is Julian Alvarez, so Dedico Madrid, here we go. The Argentine. Then it's just kind of, I guess, like the a quote, which is a mix of the original announcement and some other stuff from Fabrizio. Um yeah. Oh looks listen. Fifty pound. Which is I think fifty pound yeah. euro. Two parallel. You mentioned cards. to me sorry. Sorry, no, you just you mentioned to me off air that people were complaining about the checklist and you were observing the fact that tops, in fact, don't control the transfer market and that, no. you know. It's um, it's always this way. I remember the year that Messi and Ronaldo both moved, you know, and they had autographs in it and it was, you know, Messi yeah. for PSG, Ronaldo for Man United. They changed up the format that year as well. I think it was just their autographs in boxes. But um, yeah, they're out of control. It, it's blame the clubs. blame Because at this point, it's like, oh, thank God Atletico signed Julian Alvarez because now he's made some signs a bit better. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, I agree. Um, it's autographs, one in every two boxes, uh, two parallels per box, uh, six packs of six cards per box. Would you like to know who has first shirt relics? Yes, please. Joao Neves, uh, William Pacho, Mateo Sule, Frosinone old boy Mateo Sule, Avar Marata, Dominic Solanke, Wilson Odebear, and Manuel Ugarte. For sure. So no, no Mbappe for a shirt relic. Mm. Or... Um... Hendrick, although I, I wonder if they kind of, I don't know if Hendrick is classified as a signing because they technically signed him prior and he only moved. I don't really know. Oh, that's He's definitely in here as a star signing, I believe. He's is on he the, in here, yeah? Yeah, out there. Sorry, rising star. If you go down a little uh, bit. Oh, yeah, so he is, yeah. So I don't really understand yeah. that. It would have been nice. So that's that's where they should have improved. It could have improved is uh, Hendrick autographs. Obviously, yeah, Mbappe is exclusive. But. Um. Who have they got? They got uh, Julian Alvarez, Jan Alvarez, uh, yeah, Xerxes, uh, Joe Felix for Chelsea, Matthias De Ligt, Joe Palinha, Maximilian Bayer, Antonio Nusa, Danny Olmo, Danny Olmo uh, autographs. I presume that we talking about Barcelona fans. And then right down the bottom of this checklist, we see this little thing that says only one on it. Mm. Um, and this is a very Peculiar. interesting concept. Uh, let's have a look at the yeah let's break uh, let's break the news for the people let's break what only one means because we've gone digging yeah so this is a tops ripped article um only one that's the logo there um i'm sure i cannot imagine how long they spent in meetings trying to figure out how to stylize only one you know should we written out only written out one should it should the should the l be a one who knows what that l is a one isn't it Kind of looks very similar, yeah. There's, oh, I, well, no, it looks, kind of, looks a bit different. Looks a bit different. Yeah, but you could have conceivably used the one as the L, and um, that's true. Anyway, so this is right. You ready for this? This is the latest and quote unparalleled wink wink trading card innovation from Tops. Only one cards are a unique single hit featuring an on card autograph from a top tier current player or legend. There are no parallels, no image variations, not even a base card. It's a completely unique design with an on-card auto from some of the biggest names in football. Each player 
will only receive a single only one card in their entire career, making these some of the rarest trading cards around. Extra thick stock, metallic foiling, ultra premium, uh, not tied to a specific brand. So we've asked the top design team to let their creative juices flow and we think you'll be impressed. No two cards will ever look the same and no two player will have a repeated only one. You can find only one cards in tops.com exclusive UEFA club competition products like Summer Signings, Tops Deco, Tops Gold, Tops Simplicidad, etc, etc. They're not going to tell you who is featured or what the card looks like. You'll need to just look out for the only one logo on the checklist and then get ripping to find out. Uh, there may be more than one of these cards in a product, so check out how many only one symbols there are. Um, so, yes, Enzo, this is a... Uh, it's going to pop up in different products, these kind of different uh, tops e-commerce products. Um, and there's only one for a player in their whole career. How do you, how do you feel? All right, so it kind of feels... I don't know. I don't know. It feels like um, kind of like the kind of concept of the living set, which is you only get one, but you only get one of them per club or per nationality or whatever. So like this, they're saying that only one logo, if you hit a Federico Chiesa only one, it's going to be a completely, the brand is only one, basically. Like it's not yeah. going to be Topps Chrome. It's not going to be whatever. And once there's one, you're never, you're never seen another one. I think that's a good idea. It's a true one of one, I suppose. It's a true one of one. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. Um, yeah, I think there, I like so it. there are no parallels. You just you get one. Like so, so um, w- let's say Z- Zinedine Zidane will have an only one card. There will only be one of those. You don't have to have the conversation of well, they could just make another one of these next year. They've told you they won't. Um, hmm. It'll be interesting to see how they look, and obviously on card auto that helps. So, so again, so yeah. somewhat similar. I want to say similar to Marks of Excellence, but obviously Marks of Excellence, they all had the same design. This is saying it's not going to have the same design. Marks of mm. Excellence had multiple parallels. It wasn't just a one-on-one uh, with no base, no parallels, etc. So um, I think it's good. I mean, it'll be interesting to see. It's kind of, I, I it'll be interesting for breakers because that said, um, somewhere there it said um, current players or legends. So if you think of Summer yes. Signings, there's obviously no legends in Summer Signing, apart from Matteo Sule, of course. But it's yeah. like, um, Let's say Zinedine be, Zidane is the only yeah. one in that and you're doing a break and Zidane pops out and obviously there was no Zidane spot. That'll yeah. cause some problems, but I don't have too much sympathy for that. Spin a wheel, whatever, have a bit of crack. I'm sure breakers will say, well, this was on checklist, so it's mine. Yeah, um, I get to keep this. this you might mine. end up in a situation where only one becomes its own spot. Spot in a break. That's right. Um, but I mean, it could be good. Like I, I was, Without an image to go with it, it's hard to get super excited, but I like I like it. I like the sound. Yeah. The the interesting thing is that it's like, um, or one of the interesting things is that it's, there's only one. So like, it's not like if you, when it comes out of the product, there's no like, does it have an effect really on, on, on the, on the price of the product or on like the kind of the, what's the chase in the product? Because there's only one of them and who knows where it is. So it's not like if you find out that there are Laminia Mal marks of excellence in a certain product, because someone hits an of 10 or an of 5. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, that's exciting. But there are still four of the five of them left or whatever. You know, it's like, oh, that was hit. But like, it wasn't possible to hit another one. I, I don't yeah. know. Do you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, it's, it's strange. A true, like, there is a completely unique card. That's just kind of hidden in one of these boxes. Yeah. It's a bit bizarre. But especially because bizarre. you don't know who it is. Because it's like, would there be more or less Jeopardy knowing who it is? Mm. For example, like if they said, let's say this was last season or whatever, let's say uh, they go, the Lamini Mal 101 is in Summer Signings. Surely Summer Signings would go booming yeah. before it's hit. So without knowing, it's just kind of like, is there an only one Alvaro Morata in this product? Yeah, yeah. Which yeah, would yeah, be yeah. hit with the Milan fans because Milan fans are massive. Or is there an only one, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo in this box? Yeah. Which is like an on card Ronaldo. You know, so yeah, it's. Because it's not like, because I was thinking, like, um, I, I think they call these continuity inserts. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we've seen the Grail is obviously a good example of this. Yes. Where you can, the Grail is in multiple different products and you can, hidden gems. you know, hidden gems is multiple different products, all that kind of stuff where it's like you can put a set together, but like you can have, like, there are multiple Grails out there. That was the, that was actually a criticism, I believe, of the Grail at the time was like, no, but it's not really because like there's loads of these kind of you know not loads, but there's a few of them. There's in, like a hundred of each or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And this is like an extreme. It's weird. Yeah, I mean, 
it would be you'd uh, without seeing them without knowing too much about it you would imagine if someone could put together three or four of these or maybe like all of the ones that pop up that are man united or whatever you know it's like yeah 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 that in theory should be a super impressive thing to see because it's only one you know it's like yeah but here's one for you does it kind of like it's i think what's we were talking on uh one of the recent podcasts about artificial scarcity versus real scarcity yeah and i think because this is actually real scarcity there is only one of these things it's not a one of one parallel it's, but it's like, just yeah, like if you and if it's it's a thing because i think about it uh, sorry jason to cut you off but the champions league trophy was kind of this in the, yeah. in the last yeah, top yeah. scrum there was one champions league trophy it was a one of one there was no base, no other numbers. But the difference with that is they could make it again. They've never specified that they won't make it again. Yeah. So that can exist again. Whereas this is kind of saying we've made this brand. It's only one. If a player gets one and it comes out, like if you're like, I, I think it's someone like Penenka who collects all of the Celtic stuff. It's like they put out, suddenly someone hits it. It's a Celtic one of a player you like. It's like, if you don't get that card, you will never get that card again because they're not going to make it again next year. You can get a one-on-one inception and next year you can try and get another one. But it's like, yeah, the only one. Like it's it's a good. Eh? But no, there's, there's jeopardy to it. But I don't know. Like, do you take it? You put on golden auction. What 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 does it do to the price? Because now people are like, I collect Andrea Pirlo, and I know I like this card. I like the yeah. only one brand. Like whatever. I suppose the difference is we don't have no association with the only one brand at the moment. That's the difference. Yeah, but for instance, what's like. I think what's 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 freak what's freaking me out is how does this change what a one of one parallel is? Because like there are sets, say like Panini Noir, right? Yeah, I don't... they only made that once for soccer or Panini Flawless, right? Well, I think so. You've got some Noir popping out with some Chronicles throughout the years, I believe. Okay, let's say Flawless then. Let's say okay. Panini Flawless. A one of one Flawless, like, is a one of one is one of one. There is only one of those. No, I know. I know what you're saying. Like, what no, I'm saying is, like, it's essentially just a, an unnumbered one of one, isn't it? Well, it's definitely going to be numbered, I think. I think it'll say one of one on it, I would assume. So would it say one of one? I would say only one. Because what I'm saying is, oh, it's like, you're saying... almost like they've reinvented, they've gone one step beyond a one of one to now it's an only one. Okay, what yeah. You're, one you're saying one? it will not be serial numbered one of one. It'll instead have a only one logo in that section. Yeah. That would make sense. And then... But yeah, you're saying tongue-in-cheek, it's kind of saying that all the other one ones there's not only one. Yeah, kind of, yeah. But here's the thing. Is there more collectability in a Topps Chrome one one than there is in an only one? Because there's the kind of... If we're talking about collecting, <laughs> like, do you want to collect something that there's only one of and there'll never be another one? Do you want to, like, collect it, if you know what I mean? Like, you you can have a high-end collector that collects all of the one-of-one super fact autographs of a player that they love and every year it comes out, they buy it. And they have a collection yeah. of six of them together. It looks super impressive. But if there's yeah. only one, it's kind of like, it, it's a kind of like the Haaland thing on an even more extreme, um, extreme basis. The Haaland um, tops, tops now. now, where it's like mm -hmm. no one ever really sees this. No, one, like you go to a card show and someone goes, "Look, I have this only one," and they're, you're kind of going, "What are you talking?" About? This is kind of ultra exclusive to the point of of people going like, "Well, I can't engage with that." Really, it's only there's only one of them. Yeah, I don't really understand. Obviously, like it's something for high end collectors, no doubt about it. You know, because there is. There's only yeah. one. Yeah, like, I, I, I like it. It's just, it's kind of like, I like this kind of stuff. This is like good. This is good stuff. This is all they've good added stuff. to summer signings. There is a level of jeopardy now to summer signings that there normally wouldn't be. People are complaining about it, but it's like someone's gonna get this only one card, and who yeah. could it be, and what could it be, and hopefully that card is hit pre more tops.com stuff coming out, and we actually kind of get to have a look at it and go, okay. This is what mm. we're chasing in Deco or in, you know, Simplicidad or whatever. This is what's up next. But here's here's one for you. Could they say, like, okay, in 20, uh, 24, 25, the only one checklist is, and release what players are on the only one checklist, but don't... Say what set. Don't say what set's which. Because right now I feel like we're just completely in the dark. We're like, but is that the... okay, I, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to be chasing here. My my question is like, do you do you drop out any hints of who it is? Do you do you, do you put in like the nationality? Mm. Only one nationality, only one club, maybe. Yeah, and leave everyone guessing. Or is that is it, is or is it fun to just be? It's completely because like, is it also like is it kind of nice almost to just kind of throw it in there and not really market it that much? It's just literally yeah. a bonus. It's like it's literally like some 
someone will have a box of Summer Silence and then suddenly they'll have this bizarre on-card autograph amazing card that no one knows about. Yeah. And whoever that player is, they will never have one again. Whether that matters or not is a different thing. It's the only thing. Yeah, because in theory, like, you know, like, because, like, you know, the, like, if a player has a Topps Chrome Super Factor rookie auto, they'll never have another one of them again either. I suppose that that is one thing. Yeah, the rookie, there's only one one of one rookie from a specific set. Well, there's only one one of one anything, but we only care about the rookie. Yeah, the, the rookie's the only one you can't, like, in t- you know, right. that people kind of put on a pedestal. But you can't replicate it, is what I'm saying. You can't replicate yeah. it. Once it's done, you, but you can't, can't replicate, replicate someone's second year uh, That's true. Super Factor either. What I'm saying is that this is messing with my mind because a one of one is <laughs> it one of one. There is only one one of one. Yeah, in every one of one. Yeah, that's right. Because if this is different to one of ones, then what oh, are one of ones? Think of Top's Dynasty. There was about fifty one of ones of the same player <laughs> looking like this, and then looking that's like true. this, and then looking like this. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Yeah. So, like, if you're if you get a Leo Messi, one of one, or the, uh, only one. Mm. Leo Messi, only one. Whatever way he's looking on that card, they're not going to make another one where he's looking off in the opposite direction. There's one for you, Jason. Yeah, we can, um, we can reduce the possibilities of this only one probably by the tops' ability to get on card autos. Mm. Chances are, it's someone who's already signed an on card autograph in another top set is the only one. Oh wow. So you look at Dynasty, they're all up for they're all on the board. Yes. Yeah. That's Everyone, I guess you would start at the Dynasty checklist. Start at the Dynasty checklist. Because like at some point the signing sessions were happening where this only one card was signed. Yeah. So you start there. So that's a big checklist. That Dynasty, you know, we're talking Maze Amount is in there. Yeah. But imagine but it's I don't know, does it undermine other collectibles? It's 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 brilliant. It's brilliant, I think. That's, yeah, that's what I'm saying, is like it's kind of like... Uh, will it rise to the top or will it be kind of rejected? That's the big question. Yeah, because it, it is pack-pulled, but it's not... It's not... Um, it's not a set, really. It's not a set, really, yeah. But like, do you think like everyone that ha- owns... An, like, at the end of the season, let's say 20 only ones pop out, maybe less. Yeah. yeah. Let's say 20. And 20 different individuals get them. Do they all hang out together like... They all like, oh, look at all the really guys with the only one. Oh, you think like, well, they form kind of an exclusive club? That's right. You need to own an only one to get into this club. Otherwise, yeah. go away. There's only one of these. The only and... one club. Yeah, that's right. How do you get in? How do you not get in? I don't know. The, I, it, it's thrown you for a loop. It's thrown you for a loop. It's thrown me for a loop. Look, look, I'm, I'm sort of excited o- by it. In an otherwise unremarkable summer signings, you know, because summer yeah. signings always, it's, Cheap, cheerful, you know, it's cheap considering all other hobby box prices. Cheap, cheerful, it is what it is. If if your player, if your club has signed a new player, you're excited about it. It has yeah. thrown a complete and they, you know, they've added relics as well. They've added the little vouchers. Like they've definitely improved it this year. So it's like this is a weirdly enjoyable additional chase, or maybe not, because we don't know. But ultimately, let's just call it what it is. Ultimately, there is a one of one on card autograph that looks apparently looks good. You know, it's thicker, it's nice, yeah. like it's not. It's not the summer signing design, basically. It's not mm-hmm. like a thin, whatever, paper stock. So, yeah, that's good, I guess. It's kind of exciting. You're kind of like paying attention a little bit more to how summer signings is being ripped and opened. And is this, what, what are these going to look like? And do they matter? Yeah. But I think, okay, I just want to say one more thing, which is going back back to the Haaland tops now, uh, too scarce for its own good kind of yeah. thing. It is like when you see a at a card show, you go to a table and there's something like the hand on tops now. I always think like part of the reason why you get excited at a card is like the possibility that you might get it. Like you might mm. like you see it and you go like, oh, that's so cool. I, I should. And then you kind of like look and see like how much are they? How much do I go for? Um, can I get one of those or whatever? But like with the only one, it's like it's almost when you see that somebody has it, it's like, well, how do I? I guess, oh, I guess you you would oh, you would buy the next box that comes out. Is the idea? Here's what I just thought about. And now. I'm getting it. Now, here's what I just thought about. We've seen okay. recently with the tops now situation with the Olympics and stuff like that. Yeah. People are getting redemptions. So, do you think the only one could be a redemption card when it's hit? Especially with on card autos, that's where more redemptions are kind of coming from. Yeah. Is it a case of it's actually a redemption? 
Yeah. Well, I mean, you would you would hope it's a redemption, wouldn't you? Because it's easy. It's uh, if there's an ultra thick premium be card autograph, it'd be wayable. Yeah. Yeah, you'd imagine it be in a mag as well, considering it. Yeah. Only, there's only one. So it might, you might not even need a way. You might be able to feel it. That's all right. It might be a redemption then. Hmm. But like, hmm. I remember when the Grail was announced and we were talking about that, like there was kind of a, like no, like no one talks about the Grail really. I mean, obviously conversations do happen around it, you know, but like, it's not really a, it's a very niche thing. Yeah. But the, the Champions League trophy, I think is the opposite end of that. Whereas there was only one that was promoted. We obviously all know about the trophy, you know, whatever it was Tops Chrome, mm. we recognized the brand. So that, that rose to the top, I think did 40,000 or something when it sold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, basically, okay. do high end people care about this? Like, and, and without any images and without any proper promotion, can they care about it? You know what I mean? Like, it's like if one just gets hit and you've never heard about it, hasn't been hit. You know, if a tree falls in the because forest. traditionally a card that comes out of summer signings, no. Like, I do think if the only like, okay, let's say this right. I do think like the podcast. There's loads of other stuff on the show. We can't spend ages on this, no. but. If this was an, the exact same thing, but it was in like the Grail or like Hidden Gems, if it was in Topps Chrome, it was in Merlin Chrome, it was in Stadium Club Chrome, it was in Museum, and it was in whatever else. At that point, I think high-end collectors would be straight on it. Mm. Because they're they not would, the ones they, ripping in Summer Silent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you might go to a high-end collector and say, look at this, there's only one of these. This is Zinedine Zanan's only ever only one card and mm. they go how do you get those and you say i got it in summer signings they might go like well i don't care about that listen we're gonna have to wait and see jason we're gonna way. have to wait and see oh, my god speaking of on card autographs and who's doing them and who's not doing them yes um two young superstars uh got in on the top now action uh this week endrick um has a tops now for club record youngest UEFA Champions League goal scorer for Real Madrid. Look out for on card autos. So tops have fully adopted this. Um, the the success of the Shoei Otani, the success of the uh, basketball Olympic triple auto, the Curry Messi, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can get that. I like that they made a vertical. That's a big win. That's a that's a very interesting one. The non auto is is horizontal. The auto is vertical. I do like that because that looks yeah. better than horizontal. Mm. So, um, Endrick on card autos in tops now are yeah. here. Does that rookie. mean Endrick on card autos are rookie logos? Is there? We're going to have yeah. an entire season of Endrick as a rookie after he had Brazil and Palmeiras rookies in Benini product. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then Lamine Mal also uh, getting the uh, first wave of Champions League goal uh, tops now with the on card auto. So we're looking at a situation where maybe these only ones are Endrick and Lamina Mal. Mm. Maybe two of them, you know. You're um, saying this is confirmed that we have some on cards here. Yeah. Topses, or at least Fanatics, should be say, a capability and ability to really push soccer. Those parallels look amazing. Uh, really they push really soccer they, yeah. into, yeah, I wonder what they look like in person. Uh, push them into on card auto nature in soccer. Yeah. I'm rambling here, sorry. Just say, yeah, the ability, like that is something that we've not, we've taken for granted a little bit. Like, there's been so many more on card autos since Fanatics have taken the reign. Yeah, it definitely is. Like, you know, we, I think a lot of the other sports have kind of traditionally looked at soccer and gone, like, why are these all sticker autos? Like, what's going on? And we go, they're, they're autos, aren't they? And they go, no, they're not autos. They're sticker autos. Yeah, get out of here. I can't um, wait to see, like, Top Scrum just having on card autos. That's what I'm living for. Yeah. Because when not- you get, I mean, we, I remember when we were in New York, we opened a box of baseball finest and they were all on card. Yeah, we were like, what the hell? Makes it so much better. Very much so. Because it's like, why sign the sticker? Sign the card. You're still signing. Yeah. It's the same amount of signing, only we're happier now. So, um, that's just a little, just to say about the the, uh, the tops now. I don't know. I mean, obviously we're seeing in America that these tops now numbers are crazy. Yeah. Um, What was it? when Back during the the last tops now craze, there was the Makoku 13,000, was it? No, I think it was 48, maybe. 48,000 for Makoku? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and... The recent one with the uh, Shoyotani, was that 600,000? Is that right? 656,000. My God. Yeah. So it's like, there's, uh, I don't know how I feel about it. Like, it's obviously whoever inside Tops has decided to kind of really turn it into kind of a big golden, golden egg chase. 
Yeah. That was a very obvious thing to do. You know, like it, it never really made sense when you could just buy a lot of things out straight. Even like Lost mm-hmm. Rookies, like you look at Lost Rookies and it was like you could just buy it for a thousand, the one on one, as opposed to just having it be a chase. So yeah. it makes sense that that's happening. But yeah, you're definitely pulling a lot of money out of the system doing that. Yeah. You, you, you're kind of, you because you, you, like, if you're Fanatics, you're tops. Um, if you're any manufacturer, it's like you have the autos, you have the ability to print the cards, you have the licensing deals. So to a certain extent, it's like, how does, what is their responsibility to the market to not produce these cards as well as what is their ability to make loads of money producing these cards? Yeah. You know, do they have any responsibility to not make these cards? Because you're looking at like, obviously hobby boxes have gotten so expensive and, and people to tell you whether you're opening hobby boxes personally or you're break, getting into breaks or whatever, like the return on investment. Um, and by, some people, by the way, have been commenting on the podcast recently and saying it's not about the money, it's about collecting. I would completely agree, except these are serious amounts of money that people are paying for stuff. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, like these tops now kind of represent like a lottery ticket chase. And... And that's fine, but like that's it. Everyone, to. same thing with breaks. Like once you're under kind of twenty dollars, everyone's happy to just take a chance. But I think if you actually broke down the Shoei Otani, like his the fifty fifty thing, it was like right six hundred fifty six thousand. So like if you bought a twenty pack, what are your odds of actually potentially winning? Mm-hmm. And it's probably you're a better chance going into Fanatic Sportsbook and you know taking the over under on a on a game, and you have a better yeah 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 or a Y. So it's a bit yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. But at the same time, it's kind of that thing of like everyone. They want to buy it, buy it. Because people will say you get the cards and the cards are worth almost what you paid for it, but like not if there's 650,000 of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we'll see. Um, it's interesting. Okay. Speaking for the longest of, time, of, Tops Now was yeah. a big a big game in soccer during the boom. It was like one of the big things that people did. Um, like, yeah, I think Tops Now was like successful in soccer while it wasn't, when it wasn't that successful in other sports. Yeah. And then they figured out the the appeal of it. There you go. Uh, I, that's just something that concerns me a little bit is market liquidity because that money is kind of going one way. Yeah. I do. I also think that it... But then like, I don't know, it's like, it's like buy responsibly, do it, do whatever you want, you know, it's not really... Yeah, but more, more than that, I think there is a potential for this to lead to a bit of oversaturation in the market and a bit of... You're kind of you're removing some of the specialness of hobby boxes and of pack pull stuff, and you know, yeah, so like, obviously, fanatics are so intent on growing the market; they're so marketing um, oriented, you know, like, and it must be frustrating for them to be putting stuff in boxes and then just hoping it gets pulled. How do you how true. do you shout about that? But it's like, yeah, you'd, you'd imagine like, could they have snuck that kind of curry messy card into Tops Chrome in the upcoming season, and just been like, look at that as that class? Yeah. But I don't know. Um, that wouldn't have sold however many units that sold. So, yeah, but you look at like the 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 Curry Messi, the triple thing, the show me that, etc. Like, they like, all feel like they all feel because like, it's kind of like they were all together. And it just feels like every week they're doing this. But it's like those were all kind of three kind of exceptional situation. You know, the, well, okay, Messi, Messi was Messi's no Messi, Messi, no. Messi doing that. Wasn't <laughs> not a historic, historic event. event. No, not quite. Yeah. Uh, very close to, but not quite. But it's yeah. like um. They feel all together, but at the same time, it's kind of like if you're actually looking to do it and you're trying to do it, you'll probably find it every week in sports, you know. Mm. But hmm. something to keep know. an eye on for sure. Definitely a fascinating numbers coming out of those print runs. Yes. Um, over on the high end at uh, Sotheby's auction house, um, we made the we made the New York Times, we made the Athletic, the hobby made the Athletic uh, this uh, week. Holy Grail's auction mix of sports with high society as trading cards reach the upper echelon. Mm. Uh, New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft was surveying a pack of baseball cards. He looked bemused. To his left stood his friend Michael Rubin, the founder and CEO of Fanatics. To his right was a media member who was attempting to engage Kraft in the modern tradition of opening baseball cards on camera. You got anyone good? The media member asked. I have no clue, Robert Kraft said. So uh, this is an article all about how the stars were out for this Sotheby's Holy Grail's Fanatics auction thing. Um and uh, yeah, there we go. Look at that. There he is, Robert Kraft opening baseball cards. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um. 
So the partnership between uh, Fnatic and Sotheby's announced in June was conceived to bring together two disparate wings of the high-end collectibles market. Sotheby's is seeking to increase its foothold in the trading card market, which is growing as an asset class, while Fnatic's is hoping to tap into Sotheby's international reach and broader and well-heeled clientele. Um, so let's have a look and see. Do we have any big numbers? Oh, this is an interesting graph. Look at this. Um, oh, yeah. It's the highest known sales of all time for art, uh, which is... Uh, Salvatore Mundi by Da Vinci, Leonardo Da Vinci, I guess. Not so what a Da Vinci. $450 million in 2017 that went for. Most expensive watch of all time is a Patek Philippe Grandmaster Chime for $31.2 million. Most expensive bottle of wine ever sold in 1945, Romani Conti, $558,000. And then, right in the middle, trading card, 952 Mickey Mantle and SGC 9.5 is the record holding trading card, $12.6 million. So and Mickey, and Mickey Mantle. I thought Honus Wagner would be doing big numbers. They just haven't sold, have they? They haven't sold, I don't think, no. Remember, Ken Golden Tunnel was all about how much they do. Yeah. Um, Robert Kraft, the owner of the Patriots, bought a Tom, an autographed Tom Brady uh, 2000 playoff contenders rookie ticket in gem mint condition for, for $120,000. But earlier in the day, he didn't understand the hobby. Look at that, that's growth. That's growth. <laughs> You see, uh, who else bought stuff? Uh, Rob Goff, uh, entrepreneur and connector, bought a 1955 Topps Roberto Clemente rookie card PSA 9 for $840,000. The record sale of the Clemente card in the same grade was $1.1 million in March 2021, so that's down a little bit. Yeah, that was um, during the boom as well. Yeah. Uh, 2018, Top Sapphire autograph, Super Factor, one of a kind uh, hey, card. Hey, only one? Only one. No, I got a second. See, we've run into it here now because you're explaining <laughs> That was a Sapphire uh, autograph. Yeah. That's that, is that so weird. Like, it's a 2018 Sapphire Super Factor. So, like, obviously, it looks like a top scroll, but it's a Sapphire. Which I didn't know. I thought it was a top scroll because they only I recently started doing as well. They only recently started doing. Does it say Sapphire on the little. Uh, it says top scroll Sapphire autographs. Yeah. So, that's obviously the same way they do Sapphire selection as Super Factors. But it's like, why did they. For like the first three years of soccer and not have super factors in it when they had it in baseball already. What what is that? I don't know what that is. Um, but that went for three hundred and thirty six thousand dollars. Ellie Dela Cruz's twenty twenty two Bowen Chrome first Bowen prospect autograph super factor went for three hundred sixty thousand. CJ Stroud one on one kaboom. Uh, how come they get the good kaboom design? In, oh, they just do. The they just do. And then an Alex Morgan, uh, twenty twenty upper deck Goodwin Champions exquisite collection rookie auto. Of ninety nine in PSA ten went for thirteen thousand dollars. That's extremely healthy. Soccer, good time to sell it as well. She had just retired. Yeah. And um, the Shoei Otani, Jason, for you was that low? That was like an all time record, I think, for a Shoei Otani card. Um. Yeah, I know. Like he's kind of in a bit. Like there's kind of a weird thing because he has like those uh those kanji uh, Japanese writing uh, yeah. autographs as well. I mean, he has so he has stuff before this, I suppose. He has Bowman, does he? And he has Japanese stuff. Yeah, I'm confused about. I don't know about baseball. I guess. So I presume there's some kind of like I ambiguity around. Yeah, I wouldn't thing. have but had I expected to be higher. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't have Ellie De La Cruz selling for the same price as Shoyo and more. Sorry, more than Shoyo Tani. Without yeah. knowing anything about baseball, by the way, and the fact that that's the first Bowman and it's a ten ten, it's not Beckett. Like, did Beckett hold that Shoyo Tani back? Who knows? Who knows? I like, like from what I understand, like Shoyo Tani is like uh, brilliant, brilliant pitcher and hitter, and is. Because I get how much money was made on that Tops Now moment, and that's what is one of ones Sapphire rookie does. It's a bit strange. Yeah, like obviously it's still, you know, it's a massive sale, and and if you buy yeah. it, if you, whoever gets the, I think the person the who bought Tops that, now, the person who bought that was sixty thousand. They bought it for back in the day, right? Okay, Sold yeah, so that's a good return. Very nice return. Yeah. Um, but I would have expected that to be higher based on just like the mythology of Shoy Otani, I guess. Yeah, and like I think he has like. They're hitting and pitching, and he is different. He definitely has loads of rookies, but uh, definitely yeah. bizarre. Um, the companies have a second auction event planned for December. Uh, the venue is set up like a baseball stadium. We know, having been to Fanatics Fest, the Fanatics can put on an event. Definitely. Um, okay. Da, 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 da. We run online auctions day in, day out, but it doesn't have the same impact, uh, said Bell. I guess that's Nick Bell from Fanatics. Uh, we're taking a very long-term view. So for us, it's about bringing more people together, allowing people to enjoy the cards. We hope we're going to be in this forever. Mm. Mm. I, I heard a sort of a thunderclap in the distance when <laughs> when I read that quote. Like, you know, sort of... Dun, 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 dun. Um, anyway, yeah. So that's that just gives you an idea of where the market 
uh, lies. Lies. At the high end. The high end's going crazy. The high end's going crazy because then it kind of adds some context to these golden soccer mm. elite, uh, listings that we're looking at. You're talking about Law 5 here. I'm talking about Law 5. I mean, I don't know if you listened to Tuesday's podcast, but uh, it was literally 13 minutes of everything else and then like 40 minutes of talking about this what it was I mean you know top scrub super factor which has yet to move since yes and it hasn't moved since um that's a strange bidding pattern I would say I don't know like there's definitely going to be action towards the end I think I don't think it ends there if it ends there it'll be a bit strange because that's weird bidding and practice maybe people just got their bit you know you got them in early on in yeah. 10 days that's yeah. right um we didn't talk about this dynasty Messi. Yeah, huge, huge numbers huge. for that. For that, I think it's a fifty-two, maybe. Buyers premium, yeah, fifty-one right? yeah. with buyers premium, and one hundred and one uh, dynasty Messi Barcelona. Only one. Um, yeah, unbelievable stuff. It is a beautiful card, definitely. Um, and am I right in saying uh, one of one Messi from another one of one Messi from <laughs> this is where the only one would have incredible power. Uh, Sold on eBay or something for like eighty thousand dollars. Yeah, I think it's not one hundred percent confirmed as of yet. It's not on Terra okay. Peak. I think that's what uh, verifies absolute payment and stuff. But right. um, that's what that's what people are saying out there. So this is a this is a really substantial price. Even this, I forget about the other one, but this, this forty two thousand fifty thousand dollar Messi is a very very good price. Definitely for you know a card that came out of a dynasty box that or peed at around thousand five hundred. Um, yeah. Boxes I mean, it now, came out but... with Dynasty Box like you know a few weeks ago. No, no, but the boxes are about between two and three thousand now on the lower yeah. side of that as well. Um, probably two thousand. You can get a box probably if it's a case. You're a bit closer to to two and a half, three. Mm. Um, so yeah, obviously low likelihood if you're entering breaks to get a low likelihood if you're opening boxes to get it. But for it, it kind of speaks to the success of of Tops Dynasty. It wasn't as much of a disaster as people expected. There was huge high end cards doing over ten or twenty k. This yeah. one is an example. And there was a lot of cards that did less than a box, which is consistent with the entire hobby, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose like the main thing was that when we were talking about Dynasty around its release, part of it was I don't know if the if the high end cards out of this are going to go high enough to justify the kind of all or nothing pricing. Um but if if Messi's are, are and I know he has like sixteen or seventeen other one on ones in this set, um if Messi one on ones are doing this much, then it's like okay, I actually see, I see the maths, I see the logic. Yeah, I think a Messi of five or of ten did eleven thousand recently, which is kind of right, like okay. on the button of a case. You know, if you ripped the yeah. case, got that, and sold it with the other four cards in the case, you would have profited on the case. If you're talking pure numbers, yeah. So yeah, Messi's doing his thing. He's carrying it. The mystery redemptions have yet to be announced, but assuming they were Cristiano Ronaldo, is that like another? Is he someone doing ten thousand for the high end mm. cards plus? Yeah, you know, up to potentially up to 40,000 if if the card like imagine a beautiful Real Madrid patch or something you know um yeah assuming assuming it's Ronaldo and assuming he's in Real Madrid he might be in if he's in there might be some United mixed in the way uh Messi has PSG and Barcelona but if you could imagine Real Madrid ones just by the nature of how all the Real Madrid autographs look because of the white Mm -hmm. kit yeah they could push big numbers um I think it was uh Socrates HQ was pointing out that the um Sporting Lisbon Grail card for Cristiano came out and it's unlicensed, which means his really? previous season Sporting Lisbon stuff maybe is only licensed uh, stuff since he was in a Sporting Lisbon kit, like you know, since he originally played for Sporting Lisbon. Yeah, that's strange. Um, just if we're wondering what he might be in, oh, probably in, unlicensed because they're not in the Champions League, they're not in European competition, maybe. But are they? Maybe they. Maybe they, they must are. be. Yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> you were watching them the other day. Uh, or were, were they in twenty three, twenty four? Yeah, they were because they won the league. I think that's where I don't know what's going on there. Um, that's a that's a that's a bargain for a one of one twenty eighteen Panini Eminence uh, Argentina Messi auto. I think weird auto though, isn't it? That's the one people dislike. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the that's the bad Messi auto. That's, not that's the, good the bad Messi auto. Yeah, that's that's when Messi's in in a hump and or his brother is at the wheel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is this the good Messi auto on this? No uh, doubt about it. There ain't yeah. no doubt no, no about uh, it. Sort of the game. This is an amazing card. Um, There's a lot of amazing Messi's up on this golden auction that I do think is going to result in Messi steals. Yeah, because like can't, you can't buy 15, them all. Yeah, there's like 15 2022 Eminence Messi's. 
Yeah. Um, that are just incredible. I would like to buy them all. Look at this. That's, yeah, there's a one one in the middle of that, so I honestly don't know if that's a good or bad thing to have put them all together. So this is an all five, an all ten, and a one of one. Which might uh, be a full quote-unquote rainbow, because I don't think there's that many... I don't think it goes beyond Oh, no, that 10. might be the rainbow. Um, this is incredible. This is the signature salute, signature salutes autograph for Messi. Yeah, uh, from good 2022 image. World good Cup. image. Great image. Clean all, oh, they have the diamonds or whatever, the little emerald thingies in there. Um, Holy smokes. Yeah, that's very nice. That's but an again, incredible... Trio. <laughs> 24,000? Yeah, at the moment, che- the cheaper than a dynasty. Yeah, dynasty is 42,000. That's insane. That, Be- that, don't, that don't make no sense. No. But I, do that think that, I don't think that should have been put together as a rainbow. You think it should have been sold separately? Maybe. I, I understand because it's a rainbow, but it's like, that's not really a set where you notice it's a rainbow, if that makes sense. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Even having the um, one on one in the middle was weird for the numeric. Like you look at it on five, you're yeah, like, it like yeah, yeah, there's a few things wrong with that. Obviously, centerpiece, whatever, but yeah, a bit weird. It's it's an incredible. There's some amazing soccer stuff uh, up here. Um, yeah, there's Cristiano. Is it uh, also a rainbow on Ronaldo? Yeah, yeah, as far as I know, that's also a rainbow. Uh, 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 uh. Are they both or just this one? That one's a rainbow, yeah. And that one's a rainbow. Crazy. Must be the same seller, you'd imagine. Uh, yeah. So somebody obviously owns all the 2022. Uh, that's right. Eminent. Eminence. And they'd all decided to sell it during this auction. That's what it feels like. Yeah. That Haaland doing big numbers as well. We said that uh, last time. Yeah. Pretty incredible stuff going on here. Yeah, there's going to be some steals out of this. Like, even two Noirs beside each other was a bit crazy. Yeah. Um. This is mad. I don't know. Like, the Dynasty maybe did it Did it kind of a... Or was it because they had the Lamina Mal, they decided to stick a load of soccer in, or what's going on? I don't know. But I feel like Dynasty incredible... Dynasty may have spooked some of the eminence holders. Right, I see what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if I was like, that's a full Jude Bellingham rainbow, rookie rainbow from Inception, first year Inception. Holy lord! Sold all separately, but in lots right next to each other. I think that's a good way of doing it. Yeah. Um, time will tell. Like, That'd be very interesting to get the kind of total. Yeah, but like um, to get the results on these, like that, like obviously, like Inception's a different set to. You know, top scrolling, but for a Bellingham yeah. one of one to be at two thousand when the Yamal one of one is at hundred thousand again, different sets, totally different sets. Um, yeah, but fascinating stuff. Um, so yeah, so if anyone oh, has Messi a... eminence, so that's insane. I know it's crazy because he won that World Cup. I mean, yeah, you can't go on here at the same this? time. You can't. There's one day left. They're all under three grand. Like, what are we talking about? They are liquidating these. They put these into the blender and they're liquidating them. We never properly set up our golden account, but I would actually like to try and pick up a Messi eminence. It would be what, big, what, but the, the, <laughs> I know why are these all being sold at the same time? This is actually I've I've reversed my position. This sale have I've gone from this elite auction is fantastic for the soccer card market to this elite auction is extremely dangerous for the soccer card market because yeah. you're putting all our good stuff on sale at the same time. I like obviously I honestly think the one owner owns all this eminence and they've all decided we're selling it, but I don't think I don't know how Golden doesn't say no. We're not doing that all at once. That would be a terrible idea, but. Maybe they did, and the person selling was like, I'm the seller, are you taking my cards or not? Yeah. And it was job done. But right now, the dynasties are matching up with those eminences very, very well. And looking more rare because there's so many eminence on this specific auction. Yeah. It's uh, it's kind of crazy what's going on. Look at that Ronaldo Rooney, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Um. That's also from this year's Topps Chrome, Dual Autograph, Super Fractor, Wayne Rooney, Cristiano Ronaldo, PSA 10, 6,200 with buyer's premium. Very, very nice. That's a real nice card. Definitely. Whoa. Um, yeah, so there's a lot to a lot to enjoy on this. Uh, Lewis Miley not having the same success as uh, Luminium Al. <laughs> no, not quite. Not quite. Um, look at this. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. What's this? It's an MSN BGS 8.5 uh, autograph 10. Messi, Neymar, Suarez 2 of 5. Um, $2,000. Like, lads. It's crazy. What are we doing here? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but Does anyone remember these people played together? Like, are we, <laughs> am I out of my mind? What's happening? You're out of your mind, Jason. That's it. This is not, this is not considered to be desirable by the, by the bidders on this auction. The auction's not over yet. 
I'll tell you that much. But look, it's not an autograph from the time, so it's nice, but it's not. I know it's not an auto, It's not a rookie. It's not, you know, yeah, there's yeah. a million different. I understand. But I'm just saying. By the way. It's a. Uh, yeah, but the most expensive uh, baseball card ever is an SGC. A VGS. Oh, no, but yeah, ever. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. But that's Mickey Mantle. That's different. So, anyway, so just uh, I hope everyone is, is enjoying bidding on this. Uh, this Ronaldinho auction. 101, uh, lost rookie. Yeah, 1300. Look at that, that Ronaldo, uh, beautiful at the top. That's actually, I have beef. I have beef with tops over that Ronaldo at the top. Just why did, yeah, why did the national, why do the national packs always have such good imagery and then the sets don't? Yes, I understand. Why is that so good? Do you think maybe like promotional packs like that aren't governed under the same licensing agreements or don't have to get the same kinds of approval or something maybe, like that? Maybe, but I don't really, like, why was Ronaldo, like, give me more of that. Please. You're going to get that image in Topps Chrome Euro. Yeah, but see, the thing is, we won't, and the image we'll get in Topps Chrome Euro is going to be comparing it to that and saying, what the fuck? Mm. There you go. Okay. Right, let's, 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 let's talk about those results on Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday, and then we can pay, compare the results to the, some of the Shoyo Tannies and some of the, you know, Mickey Mantles and all this kind of stuff, and CJ Strouds. See what kind of help uh, suckers in. Yeah. Um, okay, wow. We're big old show today. Someone asked us what our card show schedule is for the rest of the year. And um, Jesus. As far as I know, we're just going to one card show between now and the end of the year, um, which is the next London card show. Uh, the first weekend in November will be there. Um, but out of interest, I took a look and, and, and saw what we could potentially go to mm. uh, between now and the end of the year. Would you like to hear some of the card shows around Europe and beyond? Yes, please. All right. So uh, tomorrow, the 28th of September, um, there are four different card shows going on around Europe. Jeez. That's only four I can find. Uh, the Iberian card show is going on in uh, Madrid, 28th September. Southampton, in Southampton in England. Uh, Lille in France. And uh, Vienna in Austria. All have tomorrow. shows on 28th September tomorrow. Yeah. Wow. So, um, and one of the reasons why we're not going to any of those shows tomorrow is that we, how could you possibly decide which one you go to? Oh, yeah, I'd be stuck between Vienna and Madrid, I think. Yeah. I had a great I time. I mean, in terms of knowing, like, in terms of knowing people and, like, you know, Southampton is, like, is, is attractive to me because I know who, and we, you know, we know Martin who running it. We yeah, know we the know people who are there. there. It's closer. It's closer. But it's tough when you're punching against Vienna and, and Madrid. Yeah. Um, this time of year, yeah. though, I wouldn't, like, Southampton would probably also be more appealing as well. Hmm. Lille not appealing to me. Sorry to the Lille boys, but uh, I've been to Paris. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Um, then in on the twelfth of October, there is a, a card show in Prague. The Prague Card Show. Uh, Tops are sponsoring that one. I'd like um, to go to Prague. Uh, I'd love to go to Prague. I've been there a couple of times and I like it a lot. I've never been and I've heard good things. Oh, Enzo, to show you around Prague, that would be an absolute pleasure. <laughs> um, a week later, there's a, another a South Coast Card Show in England on the on uh, the nineteenth of October in Brighton. The Nordic Card Show is going to Oslo on the 26th of October, then London, which we'll be at on the 2nd and 3rd of November. The Hamburg Trading Card Convention is going to be also that weekend on the 3rd of November. There is something called Card Show Exhibition in Dubai. Yeah, they gave such little notice to that. That was crazy. <laughs> Announced. Card I mean, Show Exhibition in Dubai. Little, I suppose a little notice for um, internationals, but they're probably trying to focus on non-internationals, maybe. Although, why would... That can't, that can't be true. I think Dubai... Its whole focus is on international people. Yeah, I suppose they just decided we're doing it. We're doing it in a few months. Come, we are. I mean, we've done that. That's true. So you know, we're kind of we're. we're and they're obviously tailored to stones and glass houses. People that can afford to to make that trip, you know, they're kind of going to jet to Dubai. Yeah, we've given you more than enough time to come to Dubai. Get in the private jet and let's go. Get on your Emirates yeah. flight, and I don't see the problem. You've been to Dubai. Would you like to go there for a car show? Yeah, I think I would. Yeah, yeah. Um. I, in my in my mind, Dubai has a lot of uh, integrated uh, sort of like convention, hotel, shopping, eating spaces. There's a lot of kind of like tunnels leading from building yeah, to building. A lot of not needing stuff. to be outside. I would say I was outside Wait. minimally when I went to Dubai, definitely. Yeah. So in terms of if I'm going somewhere on holiday or, you know, I'm going somewhere for tourism purposes, that's not my cup of tea. Mm. But if I'm going somewhere for work, that's, I like that. Could be great. Yeah, yeah. The Burj um, Khalifa, I want to bring you up to the Burj Khalifa at the top of it. I don't like heights, as you know. No, I know, but that's why I've seen you in the Empire State Building. Now I want to see you in the Burj Khalifa. And I've yeah. been. I've been once before. It's quite it's quite the quite the sight. 
Right. Um, what do you see from up there? The, the, you honest, the, the, the tall buildings? Yeah, you see, you see the desert. You see that kind of uh, the I don't palm tree kind of beach thing, the man-made beach. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you see a few bits like that. You see people having a good time, I guess. But uh, the, the, maybe the best thing about it is that it's inside Dubai Mall. So really, you're you know you're in the mall to get into the foot of the tower to then go up. So you're you're in the mall, like having a bit of fun. You can get a burger. Right. Um. The we can call uh, if you want. When? It's at the end of November. Uh, I, I don't want to go. Birthday trip. No, 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 no. Um, Card Madness, which we were at last year, which is fantastic, uh, just outside Dusseldorf and Langenfeld. Uh, <laughs> it is fun. That's on 7th December. And then Cardiff uh, on the 15th There is. December. So I, I know that's not an exhaustive list, but I want to say on the 16th and 17th of November, there is one in Berlin hosted by a gentleman that came to our card show. Oh. We never got back to it. Wow. We were horrible people. So, um, I just want to say that probably of all of those uh, card shows we've been reached out to by, I wanted to say, 80% of the organizers. And um, so far, we're just planning to be in London at the start of November because it's a very busy time for us here. We have some stuff cooking up in the background. But it's kind of incredible how many card shows there are. It's um, options galore if you want to go. Yeah. Um, if you want to go, then you're anywhere in kind of the Eurasia for us, like, you know, it got to a point, Jason, where like our decisions on car shows came based on if Aer Lingus flew there directly or not. Yes. So there was a couple around Europe that, that kind of got left in the dust because of the Aer Lingus, the travel routes. But now it's got, we need another method of dictating what show we go to. Yeah. We haven't, we don't, our, our matrix is, is kind of, there's something broken in our, our decision making system for car shows. We're working on that. Yeah, like this weekend we could have done two different shows the way we did Milan Paris but like that's not very sustainable yeah. and it's, it's often sad not not uh, not being with you Jason yeah I didn't really enjoy I didn't really enjoy being in Paris on my own I had a great I mean I wasn't on my own. own I had new people there but in terms of you know not having not having Enzo there with me this you know, Enzo look great. at this Enzo Obviously, look at that missing you in Milan of course but I had a great time see I, yeah, I, I, you, you, you Milan. Had... I had friends I had friends there but I, I, I missed you in Milan because you would have loved you would have laughed a lot just walking around the Italian garden. I would have enjoyed the every every the single aspect. Yeah, the feeling of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, John, I was in. Okay, so, I was yeah. in London. I'm just gonna before we said like this. This should be said off air. After you should close the podcast. That I should tell you about. But I was in London, and I was brought by dear friend. I was brought to Bar Italia. Now, oh yeah, never, famous Bar Italia. Yeah, sure. Famous Bar Italia. Yeah, near near Camden. I want to say or Soho. Yeah, I think it was near Soho. But uh, she was like, "Yeah, bring, bring that Bar Italia." And I was like, "Yeah, oh, cool, cool, cool." And uh, when I got there. I swear, I'd never, I'd never heard of it. Never, you know, I was kind of, I was thinking of like the Italian pasta bar kind of thing in Dublin. I was like, mm. yeah, a little Italian, whatever. When I tell you, every, like, talk about good fit out, Jason. A every single part of that just felt like a Roman cafe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was literally like they had the same doors, the same counter, the same chairs, the same. I was like, what the hell? Same food, obviously. Mm. But it, was, it was unbelievable. Unbelievable. My God. That's yep. all. That's all I wanted to say. Um, that's all right. I just wanted to say, speaking of London, that uh, Arsenal beat, uh, uh, for the record, everyone listening, I'm not an Arsenal fan. There's a, I'm big getting Arsenal to this for a certain reason. Big, big Arsenal fan. Um, there was a 5-1 victory in the League Cup for Arsenal over Bolton. And there were two goals for Ethan Noeri, uh, who is a 17-year-old for Arsenal. But he's also a 23-24 Panini Select Premier League rookie. Okay. So, just to get that out there. They also had a 16-year-old goalkeeper. Young. Which is Liverpool which is also yeah. got a five one victory. Uh Federico Chiesa, I want to say got an assist. But what age was their goalkeeper? Couldn't tell you. Quevin Keller probably I imagine probably twenty That's not five. Milan yeah. had a young goalkeeper come on uh in the in Derby that we beat yeah. into Milan in by the way. Yeah, uh, first time in ages. Very yeah. well done. Yeah, first time in a long time. But yeah, we had a little young fella come on who looked absolutely scared to his absolute boots. But uh mm. we won. We won. We're the winners. You're the winners. Okay, um, that's it for us. We're back to discuss all those golden auction results and lots of other things uh, next Tuesday. If uh, anyone hits the only one, we're going to put a bounty on. No, we're not. But uh, if anyone hits not. it, let us know. Well, they're, they're, they're not going to hit it for ages. Oh, yeah, it'll probably be like a month before. Officially. Print on demand. That's right. I forgot. My apologies. And um, we're back at that time. You're, you're, you're in hobby box season. No, because no, no, no. Stadium no, no. club hasn't come out yet. So how is yeah. some more signings coming out? Mm. Are we getting women's chrome? Are we getting a euro chrome? Who knows? 
Oh, God. Where's Panini Immaculate? Where's Panini Impeccable? Jason, the real question is, are we getting a week off at any stage? No. No, no, no. Put that out of your mind. That ain't happening. All right. Listen, uh, have a good weekend, everyone. We're back next week. Um, Thank you for listening. Rate and review the podcast if you get a chance. See you, Jason. (laughs) Thank you.